things are being denied they're being closed off your days are being rejected they're being closed off because when God sets up your door can't nobody stop you from going in Dr. T. Delbert and First Lady Jasmine Robinson Overseers Bishop Paul S. and Dr. Deborah B. Morton from Changing a Generation invite you to worship with us in person in the sanctuary or join us virtual Sundays at 11 a.m. and Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Atlanta or worship with us in person in the sanctuary or join us virtual from Greater St. Stephen Sundays at 10.30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Central Time from New Orleans. Stream with us on Facebook Live, YouTube, Apple TV, and Roku. One church in two states, Atlanta, cagnow.org, and New Orleans, houseofgreater.org. Coming up on Greater Change Ministries. Maybe somebody needs to get that right there. That in this season called set time, nothing is too hard for the Lord. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. From Changing a Generation Full Gospel Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, and Greater St. Stephen Full Gospel Baptist Church in New Orleans, Louisiana, one church in two states. Pastored by Dr. T. Delbert Robinson, along with Lady Jasmine Robinson, and Overseers, Bishop Paul S. Morton, and Dr. Deborah B. Morton, welcome you to The Greater Change Outreach Ministry. Now, prepare for a life-changing experience. Well, God bless you, my brother and sister. Welcome to the Greater Change Telecast. We are your hosts today, and I'm Dr. T. Delbert Robinson. And I am Elder Jasmine Wharton Robinson, and I'm excited because our very own Dr. T. Delbert Robinson preached a word entitled, The Setup in set time oh my goodness if you weren't in the building if you didn't stream virtually now is your opportunity to be blessed by this word that blessed us all let's go in right now to the setup in set time romans chapter 4 verse 19 and here paul's assessment of the life of abraham and being not weak in faith, New Living Translation, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness, necrosis in the Greek of Sarah's womb, 20 says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform Genesis 21 verse number 7 only Genesis 21 only verse number 7 and who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a baby yet I have given Abraham a son in his old age this morning I want to talk about the setup in set time. The setup in set time. Look around the room, find somebody, make eye contact with them and tell them God is setting you up right now. 
Come on, prophesy. I need some prophetic folk in the room that can look at somebody and tell them. I mean, literally, God is setting you up right now. Ushers, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Please, brothers and sisters, allow my first point to serve as my introduction. Here it is. Notice, first of all, the laughter in set time. The laughter in set time. The Bible shows us something because I'm somewhat in a series, if you will, regarding what God is saying to the body of Christ, I believe, in this time and season. Last week, as I concluded, I left dealing with Sarah's laughter. And some of you remember that I was talking about they that laughed at Sarah would now be laughing with Sarah. But please allow me to somewhat recant and rework that statement. Because the Bible showed me something even clearer that before anyone else dared to laugh at Sarah... The text actually says Sarah laughed at herself. Genesis chapter 18, verse number 9. I hope you have a little bit of time to work with this text here. The Bible says that Abraham had a visitation. Now this is in the middle of the verdict being handed down regarding Sodom and Gomorrah. And here is the dialogue of that visitation at verse number 9. Special visitors said, where, talking to Abraham, where is Sarah, your wife? I'm at Genesis 18, verse number 9. She's inside of the tent, Abraham replied. Verse number 10 says, then one of them said, I will, watch my wording here. I will return to you about this time next year. And your wife Sarah will have a son. Now Sarah was listening to the conversation from the tent. And one thing I've learned about Lady J, I don't care what I'm talking about or who I'm talking to, whether I realize it or not, she be listening. Sarah is only doing what a good wife does. She's listening in. And the text then gives the backdrop of the conversation at verse number 11 the bible says abraham and sarah were both very old at this time and sarah was long past the age of having children so at verse number 12 hone in with me so she laughed silently to herself how could a worn out woman like me enjoy such pleasure, especially when my master, my husband also, it ain't just me. She said, but Abe is pretty old as well. Then the Lord, the visitor says to Abraham, tell me this, why did Sarah just laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? Somebody shout out, shout out bust it. <laughs> Is there, I love this right here because I want to prophesy to somebody as soon as I say it. Verse number 14, I'm only reading the Bible. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Then the visitor reiterates what he said in the beginning. I will return this time next year. Somebody shout out, it is done. See, biblically, understanding to all my preachers in the room and those that may be watching me, it is, un it is important to understand that anytime the Bible says something twice, that means in layman's term, it is done. Because two is the number of adequate witness. Let me pause parenthetically, peruse the perimeter of my own preaching presentation and prophesy to somebody in the room. The Lord says, give me a trimester. 
You missed it there. Give me 90 days. And I'm about to turn your laughing at yourself to commanding people to start laughing with you. It's about 40 of y'all in the room right now. God says you got a trimester. And maybe you don't understand. Over the next three months, I hear the Lord saying, by this time in October, October, the laughing is about to change. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, give God a trimester. Give him a 90 days. Something is about to turn in the laughter that happens in set time. The laughter in set time leads me to the leverage of set time. Because while, a while Sarah has been laughing, Abraham is on the other wing of the house listening to the leading of the Lord. And ever since day one, Abraham has been hearing the Lord talk about making a great nation out of him. Genesis chapter 12 at verse number 2, it said it plainly, I will make you into a great nation. He said, Abe, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you famous. And whenever God blesses you and says, I'm going to make you famous, he doesn't do it for you to be selfish. Because the text says, and you will be a blessing to other folk. I got some popular people in the room. God did not bless you to be popular for you to post all day on the internet. He gave you the spirit of popularity so you can learn how to be a blessing to somebody else. He set you up to be a marquee and a billboard so that others may be let your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify the Father through you. This means... If Abraham, watch me closely here. Let me teach you before I preach you. I'll call that treaching. If Abraham is going to be the father of many nations, that means that siring sons must be in his future. So when you look at Genesis chapter 12, Abraham has this conversation with the Lord. At that point in time, Abraham is 75 years old. Sarah is 65 years old. And if the Lord said it, I could see Abraham in my sanctified imagination that if God is going to talk to me like this, then there must still be hope. But brothers and sisters, let's grapple with human beings being human. Because when you've been waiting 25 years for something, somebody in the room, you may be waiting for the last 25 months, 25 weeks, even 25 days. You got to admit that your hope can somehow end up being deferred. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 12, King James Version, it says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Somebody in the room, you talking in tongues, you praising God, but your heart is sick. That, that word there, deferred, it deals with you've been weakened. You've been worn down. You've been wounded by the weight. But I want to encourage somebody, they that wait on the Lord. Come on, look at your neighbor, take your fists and ball it up tight at them and tell them, wait on the Lord. Shake your fist at them. Tell them, don't be wounded, wait on him. Don't get worn down, wait on him. Don't get weakened, wait on them. That Proverbs text says, if you wait on him, when the desire comes, that the desire, are y'all reading the word with me? Will be a tree of life. 
And when you learn how to wait on God, you got to wait on him like this. And he shall be like a tree. Are y'all work, working the word with me? See, if you work the word, you'll find out that the word works. I don't have to do any motivational speaking. If you learn how to work the word, tell somebody the word will work for you. Be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth fruit in season. It's set time. That's the season. And you and I have leverage. But the problem in the text is this. By the time Sarah was 75, they have been waiting for 10 years. And the promise of the Lord had not yet come to pass. So guess what? Sarah was now sick with waiting. She was weakened with Waiting. She was wounded with waiting. So Sarah suggested, y'all remember that, <laughs> a plan called Ishmael. But Ishmael was the plan. Ishmael was not the promise. And I want to warn somebody that may be sick in the room that when you rush the promise of God, because you think that the plan is the prescription to the sickness of waiting on the Lord, you will always mess yourself up. They have been waiting for 10 years, but when Ishmael came into the picture, add another 10 years onto it. Tell your neighbor, don't do that to yourself. Come on, tell them, tell them, don't do it to yourself. Now, Sarah, you not only are dealing with infertility, now you have illegitimacy in your house. God, I wish I had somebody in here that would choose to wait on the Lord rather than to rush God. Look at it here. Now, Sarah, you got to live with the plan. Sarah, you're going to have to learn how to like the plan, whether you like it or not. Sarah, it was your suggestion. But thanks be to God that behind every natural plan, there is always a supernatural promise. Sarah almost blew the whole deal. But what she failed to see in this was that Abraham had leverage. Here's the leverage. I'm glad you're asking where is the leverage in the text. The leverage is in your Bible. It's right there in Genesis chapter 15 at verse number 1. Watch it. The Bible says, King James Version, after these things. Sometimes you got to go through some stuff in order to get to some stuff. Have I got any witnesses in here? Sometimes you got to go through it. In order to get to it. The text says after these things. God I love your word. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. What is the leverage here? The leverage is even before Sarah made a suggestion. Even before Abraham turned left when God said go right. The word of the Lord had already preceded Sarah's suggestion. Look at the text here. Her suggestion is wild. Text says, he has the word of the Lord. Sarah made a wild suggestion. I ain't got time to go into it. I don't think no wife or no woman in the room in 2022, y'all ought to talk with me women folk in here, would have made... The suggestion that Sarah made, Sarah's suggestion was wild, but Abraham still had a word from the Lord. Now we got to deal with Hagar, but the Bible shows us that Abraham still had a word from the Lord. Ishmael is not Isaac, and Isaac is not Ishmael. And Abraham knows it. 
How does he know it? Because he had a word from the Lord. I'm glad you're asking, where is this word from the Lord? It's still in your Bible in Genesis chapter 15 at verse number 4. Abraham is having a dialogue with God in the King James Version. And the Bible says, behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this shall not be thine heir. Now in this text, he is not talking about Ishmael. He is actually talking about Abraham's servant named Eleazar. Stay with me here. This shall not be thine heir. And the Lord said, if that's not his heir, then that means neither shall Ishmael be his heir. Because the text says, but he that shall come forth out of thy bowels, out of thy lowings, that's the one that shall be your heir. In other words, the text is tailored to teach us now, and I got to get out of here, that Abraham had enough virality in him to carry out the vision of God. And let me tell somebody, when you're in set time, that God is going to fill you full of everything that you need to do what God has called you to do. Wait a minute. That was a weak amen for a powerful point right there. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, God is able to fill you up right now. Come on, look at somebody else and tell them, God will do it in your life. The leverage of set time is no matter what happens in your life. The Lord says you might mess it up, but I'm able to bless it up. <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them, I've had some mess ups in my life. <laughs> but for every mess up in my life, God was able to bless up all of my mess ups. <laughs> now this ain't for everybody, but when you're in set time, somebody shout out set time. Because I don't want you to leave here talking about Pastor Rob said, I can go and mess my life up and God will bless my mess. Shall we continue in sin? Because grace abounds. The Bible says God forbid. But when you're in set time, even your mess up will become your bless up. Look at Ishmael. The text says that God had to tell Abraham, find me an E flat here, that I'm also I'm also going to bless Ishmael. That means his mess up also had potential for a bless up. Have I got any witnesses here? But when God has moved you into set time, the word of the Lord is that Ishmael will not be your heir. That whatever God has spoken in your life, it will come to pass. Have I got any witnesses his head. It may take the next 25 days and it may take the next 25 weeks but oh, you ought to tell your neighbor it will come to pass. Good morning y'all and God bless you but is there anybody here that can say ah, set me up Put me in position. I've been waiting a little too long. I've been wondering a little too long. I feel like preaching for one minute here. But when the Lord, he sets you up. Though the vision tarries, wait on it. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, wait on it. Don't give up. But wait on it, don't give out, but wait on it. I ain't got my 50 yet. I need 50 people that can say, wait on the Lord. Ah, wait. Ah, wait. Ah, wait on him. Be a good courage. Be of good courage, be of good courage, and he will, yeah, I said he will, ah, he'll set you up, ah, he'll set you up, throw both your hands, don't you all stop, 
Press me through here. Throw up both your hands and say, Lord, set me up. Lord, set me up. Set me up. Won't he do it? Let me tell you again, I mean, I kind of had an out of body experience oh my. because the spirit of God has been speaking to me that the body of Christ is in set time yes. and you have to be set up. You may feel like you're out of time, behind time, or even over time. Mm. No matter what your timing it is, it's a set up in the set time for God to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. First lady, you know what? People can hear preaching and, you know, faith comes by hearing, yes. not by what you think you heard. But let's partner our faith yes. with someone that's watching right now. Will you pray for these sisters and brothers that have connected to this broadcast? Yes, yes. Father, we thank you for everyone watching, yes. everyone under the sound of my voice in this moment. God, I pray that they will receive this word, that they will receive this word about the set up in their set time. God, I pray that every every bad thought, every, every demonic thought that will try to deter them from walking in their set time. I bind it right now in the name of Jesus and I speak faith. I speak a victorious mindset and I speak it in the name of Jesus right now. If you believe it, will you say amen wherever you are? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you were praying so powerfully and while you were praying, I heard the Lord say to tell someone in this season of set time, like Abraham, don't stagger, yes. don't waver, do not trip. You are closer than you think. Well, obviously, you can see we are not out of text. We're not out of talk, but we are out of time. So until this time next week, again, keep it locked right here. Same change channel, same change space. Change happens here. That's right. And we want you to be a part of that change. In the meantime, don't you stop until you make it a, a greater, greater change. change. Bye for now. You know, Pastor D, this is such an exciting time. God yes. is getting ready to do something major, and I'm excited about it. Yes, we're making major moves. That's what the young people say. Yes. And I'm telling you, it is indeed in God, and it is exciting, and we want to share it with the world. I really want to share it because you would really have to know our story. God has blessed us here at Greenbrier Parkway, but we're getting ready to move to 4185 Snapfinger Woods Drive. So I'm telling you, that place is on fire for the Lord. We dedicated that house to the Lord. You know, we came out of a hurricane. Yes. We didn't know what was going to happen, but look what God did. Oh, my.